Hello students, today we're going to talk about the triangle sum theorem, which is exactly what it sounds like. We're going to take the sum of a triangle and we're going to create a theorem about it. This is your, this is in chapter 3, section 4 of your books. So, couple quick things. The triangle sum theorem gives you a certain total. Means that if we add up all the angles in the interior of this triangle, let's see if we can make this work, means that I'm going to take this triangle and I'm going to take it out, leaving us just with the perimeter. I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to rotate it for us really quick. So what I'm trying to do actually is trying to connect all of the angles of the triangle. And if we do it just right, we should be able to learn something from it. And this should explain why we call it the triangle sum theorem and why it is what it is. So notice that I was able to take two of the angles already and connect them. I'm going to do the same thing for the third. And if I did this right, you should be able to see that if I connected all three angles of the triangle, this first one, second one, and this third one, we've just made a supplement, a set of supplementary angles, which means the sum of the angles in a triangle are supplementary. Okay, so let's prove another angle theorem that's very important. This is called the triangle exterior angle theorem. So we're going to walk you through the process of solving this. We're obviously going to start with our given. So step one should be very easy. That's restating the given. And our reason, of course, is given. Oh. For step two, Keeping in mind, we're trying to prove that angle one, angle one is equal to the sum of angle three plus angle four. So if that's the case, then we already mentioned two, three, and four. We need to think about how we can incorporate one. So the way, that we, the way we would do that is to actually take a copy or a picture of angle one and angle two, and you'll see just what we're going to do with that. We can easily at this point say that angle one plus angle two is equal to 180 degrees. And we know this because these two angles are also supplementary, so definition of supplementary angles. Now, because if we look at step one and step two, we see that they're both equal to 180 degrees. Now, because we know that, we can easily, or we can say that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to 180 is equal to angle two plus angle three plus angle four. And the reason why we can say that for step three is because of the transitive property. Now, from this point, we could say that angle one is equal to is equal to 
is equal to angle 3 plus angle 4, and we can say that because of the subtraction property. So really, what really helps us in solving these proofs is being able to find a link between what we're given and what we're trying to prove. So let's take a look at two more problems to demonstrate what we've learned in the last two theorems. Now in example one, or in this example, we have a triangle and we have the measures of the interior angles except for one. Now because of the triangle sum theorem, we know that if we add up all three sides or all three angles of this triangle, that's going to be equal to 180 degrees. So just doing some quick simplifying, we will learn that x plus 100 equals 180, or equals 180. Then we're going to subtract 100 to both sides, letting us know that x is equal to 80 degrees. To demonstrate the exterior angle theorem, just to recap, this means that the sum of the exterior angle, the sum of this outside angle, is equal to the sum of the two angles furthest from it, or the two remote angles. So what that means is that x is really equal to 20 plus 60. So let's try one more. Now, here's a couple extra things. We're just going to draw a couple lines to prove a couple triangles. Now in this triangle, we notice that there's no markings on it whatsoever. So what we're going to do is try and figure out what the name is of this triangle and what the definition is for, what the definition is. So maybe we'll start with this one last. This one right here is a triangle with all three angles that are equal. Hence, we can probably call this equiangular. And equiangular should be self-explanatory. Equal usually meaning equal and angular meaning angles. So all angles are congruent. For the next one with markings, we have a uh, marking with two sides the same. We call this isosceles. Now let's look at the definition carefully. Most of you would know this as two sides are the same. It's actually not entirely true. It means that at least two sides are congruent, which means three is okay too. Then we're gonna go look at another one with markings. Notice this one right here has all three sides marked. Probably means equal lateral, equal meaning equal and lateral meaning sides, which means that all sides are congruent. Then we can look at the last one with a marking which has a little box which indicates that it is a right angle or is 90 degrees. So we say it's a right triangle and it has one right angle. Lastly, now let's look at the ones that we don't know. Based off of the ones we have, this is a little bit harder to tell because we're not necessarily supposed to assume in geometry. But in this one it looks like no, none of the sides are the same, which usually refers to a scalene triangle. And scalene means that no sides are congruent. The next one we're going to look at is this one right here. Now in this one, it looks like all of the angles are less than 90 degrees, which we call acute, which means that all angles are acute or less than 90 degrees and greater than zero. Last but certainly not least, we have this one where this angle looks like it's probably going to be obtuse. So we're going to say it's obtuse and that means one obtuse angle, which means greater than 90 degrees and less than 180. Now it's your turn to try. When you're done with these, please post your answers to the next seven problems online. And that's it for now. I'll see you next time.